Hey there, Iowa Mooney Pilot here. We are out at their hangar on another beautiful day. Why are we out here? Well, last flight we had a vacuum pump issue. And so today we're gonna replace the vacuum pump. But it's no big deal because I just got big hands and small spaces. So this will be easy to do. So we're gonna film it, show you what kind of frustrations I'm gonna go through. We're gonna test it out, make sure everything works okay, and maybe take it up for a test flight today. So you guys take care, stay tuned. Here comes the video, baby. All right, we're gonna get started taking the vacuum pump off this thing. Um, I took the cowlings off the last time when I landed and came here um, just to check the hose and to make sure that I was hoping that a hose just fell off and I could just reattach the hose and then we have vacuum again. But um, everything was connected in here, everything was good to go. So I was like, well, that's kind of a bummer. It's probably the vacuum pump. These vacuum pumps, they don't last very long. You know, they say 500 hours on a, on a good, uh, good used aircraft. Um, the one that I have in here is, is an airborne um, pump. I was able to call aircraft spoofs. I always love getting boxes from aircraft spoofs. They had the funny tape on it and everything else. I always like that. But I got this, an overhauled pump. It is a Rapco pump. It comes with a two year warranty or a thousand hours. Now I'll never fly that thing for a thousand hours. But, but uh, I do plan on putting some hours on it. I want to make sure that I have something that's warranty and guaranteed. So I uh, purchased that. I also got something else because I was told I need one of these funny things. So this is a, um, a wrench, a specialized wrench for this thing because there's certain nuts that you can't get to. They're really difficult to get to. So um, they're stuck back behind it. I'll show you what that's all about. But I got this, it's supposed to make the job a little bit easier. So we'll go ahead and get started. Get this thing ripped off and uh, we'll put the new one on. We'll pull it out of the hanger. We'll test it to make sure we have vacuum and we'll cross some more fingers to have vacuum. Um, I do have a secondary vacuum on this particular aircraft. So it hooks right into the uh, manifold. So when you pull it, there's a little thing you pull in there, it'll give you uh, auxiliary vacuum. So it's kind of like a backup uh, to the pump. However, doesn't work very well, especially when you're going um, uh, flying through the sky because anything over, uh, I'm guessing 20 inches of manifold pressure, it cuts out on you. And uh, so when I'm taking off and full bore and flying and cruising fast, uh, I know that I'm gonna be over 20 inches of manifold pressure, but, uh, but anyway, this pump and this vacuum runs two gauges inside the aircraft, and it also runs my vacuum step. And on the last video, you saw the vacuum step sticking out just because it was the vacuum pump wasn't working. It wasn't sucking that step up in there. So uh, my hope is that this is it. We'll take it off, we'll test it before we put the new one in, because if I put the new one in, it's mine. But if, if I find out that the vacuum pump's working, then I have a leak in a hose someplace. I need to figure that out. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move this hose and this clamp right here to get that thing free, get everything disconnected from the um, from the pump here itself. Um, basically, this is just a little twisty clamp. You just push that back and we'll pull this off. Boom, pops off like easy. We're gonna remove this clamp here. This is basically holds down that auxiliary uh, cable for the vacuum. Basically opens up a valve on the other side there that uh, gives me that auxiliary vacuum. Looks like there's a spinning nut on the back side, but we'll have to take that sucker off. We're gonna make that happen real quick. And I'm not gonna completely remove it. I'll just pull it off, run this down. Boom, that's, that's disconnected. Okay, now comes the fun part. Let's get that new fancy Rapco tool that I've got. This is a 7 16 inch um, um, wrench. And we should probably take this off. Uh, but we won't be able to take these off. We'll be able to take this one off, I think. Looks like it clears everything. And then this one, I don't know about that. So we're gonna, because we'll have to reuse these. We have a set of wrenches in there. This thing's, oh, it's coming right off. Good. Woo! I like it. Got planes taking off, teasing me up there. Ridiculous. All right, so we got the two fittings off. We got this one off and this one off. Um, don't think I boogered them up too bad, but we will put this all back together later and see how it all fits and works and does everything else. So 
There we go, got that. Um, now we gotta take this off and this is where we use this little special wrench. So the real difficult one is the one that's underneath by the um, oil filter. And that's the one where you gotta kinda get it in an angle and, and pull it off. You know what, I'm gonna do that one last. But uh, we'll get all these other ones done real quick. And uh, this is again 7 16 so um, you can get a regular wrench, uh, open-ended box wrench type deal and, and get these off. I think that I'm just gonna use this all the way around just to get, get good practice, right? Let's use our big hands and small spaces uh, type stuff. So here we go, we're gonna get her, get her cranked. So, so it's in there, there it is, turn it. There. Okay, that's nice and loose. Well, let's, those are easy. Try this one down here. Here. Come on, come on, come on. There it is. Got it all. There you are. Whew. You know what I think I'm going to do is remove this little this hose here. This hose. This breather takes the air out of the engine compartment, the hot air, the nice hot air that comes out of the engine compartment and blows it right down on my Surefly mag. That's got to be healthy. So we're going to take this off, get this out of the way. There we are. This is loose now. Oh yeah, it's coming off. All right. The love child of this, I'm going to deliver a baby here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get my little stool. Alright, stand on the stool. Looking underneath here, and I can see it now. But gotta get the wrench in there. Oh yeah. Okay, it's in. This is the one, this is why you need the wrench. So let's see if we can get this thing torqued off. I don't want to pinch any, any wires either. Probably be better without an oil filter too, but I'm not going to take the oil filter off. That's a $30 oil filter. There it is. <laughs> Tedious. There it is. I think if I get a couple more. Oh yes, yeah. now I can maybe get my fingers under there and spin it off with my fingers. So taking it off I think might be the easy part. Putting it back on, that'll be the fun part. So, we're going to take off the washers and the nut here. Drop it. I want to drop these down in the engine bay. They find places to disappear to. Oh, did you hear that? That means it fell down the engine bay. So we got that. And... You hear that? It fell down the engine bay. I see it. It was clean in the engine bay. That's kind of cool. Like that. Very clean. Very clean indeed. And it doesn't want to come off. So we have to get the old wrenchy wrencher out again. They should magnetize this thing. Magnetize this wrench. That would certainly make things easier. One, two, three nuts. And we got the vacuum pump off. Yay, vacuum pump. Oh, guess what? It is broken. How do we know that? Because it's in two pieces. That's why. So you see how it failed here? This thing ended up failing. So we know that the vacuum pump is shot. 
um, it actually sheared off right there. So, yeah, so something locked up in it probably. Something maybe got into it and uh, keeping it from spinning. So, we'll uh, send this one back and let the guys at the overhaul shops rebuild this thing and sell it to somebody else. So, yep, definitely got a pump issue. All right, we've got the uh, new, the old pump out. Everything looks to be clean and good and awesome in here. There's no cracks or rust or any of that kind of stuff. No oil actually built up in there, which is kind of nice. Uh, this is the new pump, uh, new uh, Rapco pump. It is, like I said, it's guaranteed for, warranted for uh, two years or a thousand hours. It also comes with this handy little, dandy little meter here. So it's got an inspection hole, so you put the, you take that out, and then you can push this down in it. It's like, um, oh, there you go. I said I get this one, it's just two fingers. So basically you stick it in here and you stick it down in the hole and you figure out the depth of it and it tells you exactly on the meter what, um, when you should start thinking about replacing it. So um, kind of an inspection thing. I will keep this handy dandy little tool um, to, during annual, we'll, we'll do that. We'll get it fixed. But we'll go ahead and put this thing in. Um, I'm gonna keep the plugs on for now to make sure they don't get anything goofy down in there. But once I get it in, get it tightened down, we'll take these off and put the hoses back on. So um, we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this on. Oh, mucho importante. You gotta put the gas, put the gasket on there too. Gasket goes on. All right, so put the gasket on. Pop it on, pop it on, pop it on. Making sure not to tear it. This, the splines will actually fit up and line up in here. We'll uh, get it so that it goes in. What I'm gonna do is spin the prop. There we go, boom. Just like that. Well, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get everything put back on and uh, come back. That's the long, tedious, stupid part. We're gonna come back and when it's done. All right, might I just say that that was the biggest pain in the butt ever. When you got big hands and small spaces, it doesn't work very well. This, um, I'll have to show you guys, but this, this is the new vacuum pump here. Um, I could get all of these other nuts in just fine. It was the one that was on the other side, way down low on the back side. You can't even see it. And my fingers don't fit in the little spaces in there um, or nor in the back between anything. So what I had to do was basically um, use this screwdriver. It is magnetized. And basically what I did is I had a nut attached to it and I'll show you what it looks like. And what I had is I had a nut attached to it they won't even pick it up now. Anyway, the magnetized nut, uh, it's not working. Anyway, I had this thing magnetized at one point. I had uh, ran a magnet across it a bunch and got a little bit magnet magnetism on it. Ended up picking up this nut, dangling it over the stud, uh, taking another screwdriver, pushing it against the stud, and then um, I ended up slowly twisting it with my fingers till it finally caught threads. Once it caught threads, I was like, all right, good. Then I got the wrench in there, the handy dandy Rapco wrench. And this thing is a savior, let me tell you. Uh, best 26 bucks you'll ever spend for a tool, even though you just use it once. Um, well, hopefully once, <laughs> depends on how long you're in your airplane. But this thing was awesome. But I've got it in. Um, I've got all everything reconnected, all hoses. I blew out the hoses, cleaned out the hoses, made sure everything was uh, good to go um, because I don't want foreign debris in the um, in the fuel in the vacuum pump. Um, they say its usual lifetime on these things is about 500 hours. Um, I hope I can get 500 hours in it. At 500 hours, it'll it'll exceed the TBO of the engine. So we'll have the engine 
rebuilt, and then when I get the engine rebuilt, we'll be replacing this, we'll replace the mag on that side, this Surefly mag here. Um, that's good for 2,400 hours, so we'll still have a lot of time left on that one. Um, and then we'll obviously replace all the hoses and everything else that goes along with it and clean up this whole engine thing. But, uh, but it doesn't leak any oil, doesn't leak anything. We are gonna now test it to make sure we're getting vacuum. I am gonna put this camera on my head. So that'll be different, and we'll see if we can't get some good video out of it. So uh, we'll come back to you a little bit once we get the plane pulled out. All right, we're in the aircraft, and uh, I hope I don't get you guys sick by moving my head around. My hyperactivity disorder will, will affect, affect how this viewing goes. <laughs> so I'll try to be uh, conscious of uh, the head thing on the head, and I'll try to keep my head moving slow. So get in the aircraft, and we want to make sure that the thing starts. So what we're looking for here is this suction. This suction right here, we want it to get to, to five right there in the green. Um, that's the goal. Um, I hope it works. Um, we're gonna let it run. We'll let the engine temperatures get up. And the reason we're doing that is when we stop the engine, we can look to see if there's anything leaking, uh, any oil coming out of those seals or anything. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing fired up. We got the master on and fuel pump on. Got good fuel pressure over here. It's coming up. We'll make sure full rich it. We'll pump this one, two, three, four. And we will clear the prop. Clear the prop. There we go. Give me suction, baby. Oh yeah, look at that. It came right up to five. That's what I want to see. So here's how you how you stop the engine. You don't just go over here and turn the key off, like in a car. You basically um, you, you you ramp up the RPMs. I like to go around 1500, and then you pull the mixture knob back. The mixture knob right here, basically. Um, starves the engine of fuel. So you're starving the engine of fuel is what you're doing. So what I'm gonna do is pull this all the way back and it should die. And there we go. Dun, dun, dun. So I don't see any oil leaking out of this thing. No oil whatsoever. Good and tight. No oil dripping down, dripping down in the engine compartment. The exhaust is good and warm. Yeah, you don't want to go grabbing on these things. That'd be a bad day for you. So, yeah, looks like it's pretty good. We have suction and I got no oil down in the engine. Nothing's leaking. Hey, we win. Now we just have the mechanic take it out, sign off, and we are good, good to go. All right, we're in the aircraft, and I look really cool with this on my head, don't I? Yep, I thought I did. Look really cool, but I'm going to give you guys a different perspective. Instead of having it mounted back here, I'm going to try to have it mounted here. And we're trying to get crazy with my head and swivel, um, but I'll be looking around, so uh, we'll try to edit some of that stuff out, but... Uh, Nonetheless, we're going to have fun today. We're actually going to take the plane. We're just going to go down to, um, to Ankeny and, um, and get some fuel and then come back. So short little trip, uh, maybe five minutes down, get some fuel five minutes back. Uh, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of run time, but I get a chance to test out my uh, pump and I have my other cameras going so I can see if my step is, is retracting like it should. So um, we'll get ready to go. Um, I'm turn that off. Turn off my strobe. Turn on that. Turn mixture full rich. We don't probably need to pump them up pump them one time, and then we will uh, clear the pump. Clear the pump. All right, she started. Perfect. We will lean that out and pull this back down to a thousand. We got good oil pressure. I leave the window open because it's kind of uh, it's kind of uh, warm. Oh, I got the hiccups, man. I had the hiccups all day today. Every time I get them, I always tell my wife, I said, you can wheel those things away, you know. All you got to do is think about it and say, you know, try to hiccup, try to hiccup, try to hiccup, and then they go away. And uh, that's what I was doing today, several times. But they just keep coming back. So, um, eating too many spicy stuff, I think. So, it's bright today. We're going to listen to the weather real quick. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, 1, 2 Celsius. 
Dew point minus zero two Celsius. Altimeter three zero one three. Three zero one three. Yeah. That's the altitude seven hundred. I said three zero one four earlier. Ames Municipal That's Airport. Ames, Iowa. Automated weather observation two one five niner Zulu. Wind three three zero at zero seven. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. Temperature one two Celsius. Dew point minus zero two Celsius. Altimeter three zero one three. Remarks. Density altitude seven hundred. All right, we're good. So uh, we're going to take runway 31 since uh, the winds are coming closest to that one. So make a radio call real quick. Ames traffic, Mooney 875 is taxiing to runway 31 from Hangers. Ames. All right, make sure we don't run into any um, snow. That would be bad. We're clear, 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 clear. <coughs> So, relatively uh, long taxi, uh, all the way at the other end of the airfield, um, so this is not fun, but nonetheless, we'll, we'll get it done. Move the camera up a little bit. Um, when we get down there, we'll, we'll do this to make sure that that's working correctly. In fact, we're going to stop right here and do it. So, what we want to do is we want to wait till the compass stops jiving and moving and shaking and bumping. So, roughly uh, one four five. So we're gonna go one four five. There we are. One five. One four five. So now we got this going. We got to make sure that we see it moving. So, so the winds, uh, yeah, like three three zero. I see the sock there. It's pretty, pretty damp. It's coming kind, of, kind of straight down. So. Um, there we go. Ready, set, and go. Power. Close this. That's shut. There's 50. There's 60. And we will get off the ground. There we are. We're off. We'll put the gear down. Hey, so it's got to be gear uniform. Four miles, please, to 2,000. And we're going to notify the field and that one to the runway 318. And temperatures are good. Ames traffic, Mooney 875 is turning left to crosswind from runway 31. Ames. And this is what it looks like out the window. I don't know if you can see that. This is what I get to see when I fly. Looking around, checking things out. Make another radio call. Ames traffic, Mooney 875 is turning left downwind from runway 31. Uh, we're gonna go to the south here in a little bit and I'll let you know. Head traffic, that 39, five 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 trot, four mile final, three two wind. Here's traffic, sky seven in uniform, maybe over the interstate at 2000, I'll fly field and I'll left downwind from runway 31. Hey, we've got the running tight. All right, he's got us in sight. Ankeny traffic, Mooney 875 is 10 miles to the north, inbound for runway 36. Ankeny. Ankeny traffic, check to the 600 off, right down on 36. Yeah, so you got the guys, once you have somebody chime in on the radio, let everybody know what we're doing. Uh, they tend to, uh, everybody starts up talking because they want to be able to communicate in traffic. So they let you know, hey, listen, this is what we're doing. That, there's a guy in the pattern, traffic pattern up there. He just going right downwind. So he'll be following this way. He'll be taking the right base. He'll come back and land runway 36. So got the awesome towers out there. I don't know if you can see those things. Those t towers out there. So when I'm at 3,500 feet, I'm usually at the top of that tower out there. Um, there's towers just north of Ankeny. So the, the elevation is about 1,000 feet above the ground there. So being 3,500 feet, that means those towers are 2,500 feet tall. They are big, big towers, big tall towers. And it's those uh, four towers that are just north of Ankeny. So we're going to go ahead and drop down. Uh, traffic 6, 6, 9, power 180, short approach 360. 
So we're going to we'll go ahead and get down. The reason we're getting down now is because right at the airport there is the airspace, the class Charlie airspace for Des Moines. And we want to make sure we're at 2,100 feet or lower when we hit that point. So currently at 3,000. I'm slowing down the plane. Um, and this is, I'm trying to, trying to slow down and descend at the same time, which means I just pulled the power back is all I did. So, got Des Moines off in the distance there. You can see them. The buildings are in the, in the haze. Doesn't take long to get from Ames to Ankeny in an airplane. So we'll come down here, we'll get some fuel, and we'll head back to Ames. Vacuum pump still working. Still pumping out pretty good. Ankeny traffic, Mooney 875 is 4.3 miles to the north. Gonna enter a right downwind for runway 36. Ankeny. So we're currently at 2,000 feet. We're going to level off here. So we're below the Charlie airspace now. And if you look out there, you can see a train. Choo choo! Chugga 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 chugga. Got some homes in here. Ankeny homes. I bet I look sexy with this thing on my head. Ankeny traffic, Mooney 875 is turning final for runway 36, Ankeny. Checking our airspeed, we're at 100. I'm going to pull our airspeed back a little bit. And there's the runway right in front of us. Two lights, that means we're high. We'll get down. And we'll pull the power back some more. We're still doing 100. Now this one we can land long, and the reason we can land long, we got red coming into white, which is good. Means we're coming in a glide slope. Uh, we can land long because we're, the fuel pumps are on that end of the, the, the airport, so ideally landing long is better, but we'll just try to make a good landing here. Wind is coming out of this direction, so we expect to be pushed this way. There's 80. Write the numbers. Light and boom, like a glove. So smooth, so smooth. Left bag, back to both. Right bag, back to both, and then carb. Yeah, she's looking good. This thing's a runner, man. I love this thing. All right, fuel pumps on. Got two notches, got all my lights on. We'll do a radio call. Ankeny hey, traffic, Mooney 875 is going to depart runway 36 to the west. Ankeny. Hey, got Kyle calling me. Yes? Hello? Yeah, what's up? Hey, uh, I just want to let you know, I think my clutch is slipping in my car. Okay. Well, where you at? Oh, well, I'm at work right now, but I was on the, the highway, and I was going in fifth gear. Yeah. And I had to, like, get on it a little bit. Yeah. And so I did. Yeah. And then the RPMs went up, but then my, my car wasn't, like... Accelerating? Yeah, was acce it was accelerating, but, like, not like it should. Okay. Well, get home, and then I'll take a look at it later. Probably tomorrow. Alrighty. All right, dude. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye. All right. Got the conversation with Kyle. Car issues... Love it. Thank you, the traffic Mooney 875 is now departing runway 36 to the, uh, and we're going to go to the west. Thank you. All right. Here we go. Here we go. There we are. 50, 60. Wow, already. 70, and it's feeling light already. There we are, we're up. We're 
gear it up. Flap it up. Going over Fountain View neighborhood here, where that's the one with the, uh, the pond. A buddy of mine, Steve, lives in the house down there. And then here is North East Elementary. It's where Kyle went to school. And then there's my house. We'll fly over it. Got my truck in the driveway. Got a Lexus car in the driveway. And we got the football stadium down here. We'll go over that. On left bank. Go to the Ankeny Hawks football stadium. Ankeny and Ankeny Hawks and Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. They share this stadium. They uh, they play opposite each other. Uh, on Friday nights and uh, one night a year they play each other and that stadium gets jam packed because of all the the people the both schools this is uh, Prairie uh, Prairie Ridge Sports Complex all the ball, baseball softball fields and soccer fields huge complex so the Ankeny Little League plays Ankeny Junior Football and uh, several soccer deals they also hold a lot of tournaments there Pretty cool. We have over here, we have the John Deere facility. John Deere, this used to be a military base. Um, and there, they had a water tower here and it was painted kind of funny colors. But uh, yeah, it's now the John Deere facility. So they build tractors and all kinds of stuff there. tractors and combines and they came up with that song she thinks my tractor's sexy they were sitting in that place they think my tractor's sexy and then we're coming up on Sailorville Lake this is Sailorville Lake out here and we're going to fly almost directly over Party Cove there's Party Cove the little indent right there that's, that's Party Cove Don't ask me how I know it. Actually, I know it because I used to go there a lot. When I had a boat. Go hang out there. That's where everybody goes. Where all the cool people are. Flaps were up. Mixtures. And then there's the spillway. Spillway. Spillway right there. Water drains from the lake down into the spillway. And it's still covered with ice. And we're doing 160 miles an hour across the ground right now. And then there's the marina right there. We'll actually go down the marina here. There's some birds out there flying to my left. We're going to stay away from them. Um, parking for the beach. And this is the marina. Pretty awesome. We'll go ahead and get out of here. It's an altitude.
We'll head back to Ames. Well, I hope this video turns out pretty good. Uh, this is kind of, uh, I kind of tend to have my head on a swivel, um, looking around, checking things out, making sure that I don't miss anything. Um, so having my head on a swivel with the camera on it, I don't want to, don't have to see what the video looks like. Uh, I don't want people barfing. Blah. Ames traffic, Mini 875 is entering a left downwind for runway 31. Ames. Ames traffic, Twin Comanche 7983, Yankee 3 runway 31. Ames can be southwest on out of the pattern. Ames traffic, Twin Comanche 7983, Yankee 3 Alpha, runway 31. Ames traffic, Twin Comanche 7983, Yankee 3 Alpha, runway Gas is on fullest take. We're gonna switch. Gas on fullest take. Yep. Undercarriage. We're gonna blow 120. We're gonna put that down. Carriage locked and set. No, nope, not the green light. We gotta have a green light. There we are. Green light. Undercarriage. Mixture is full rich. Props full forward. And we'll take a left. Ames traffic. Mooney 875 is turning left base for runway 31. Ames. At 90, we're going to go ahead and give ourselves some flaps. One, two, and we will trim this out. We're going to go ahead and, and hit the button five times. Traffic, 107659, Foxtrot, left, crosswind, in traffic, 3 1, in traffic. Ames traffic, Moody 875 is turning final for runway 3 1, Ames. Alright, we're going to hit it five times, it'll turn on the lights. There we are. So red over white means you are all right. So we're all right on glide slope here. I'm going to go ahead and trim that back. Two, three, you can uh, turn that on top left down with me. Hey, we'll hopefully butter this landing. What do you think? We'll try. Aim traffic, wire 765, man, fox shot. Left, downwind, 3 1, aim traffic. There we are, perfect speed. I like this runway because I can float all the way down to the other end and then get off and I'm like right at the hangars. That's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet that you get to come down here and go all the way to the hangars. We'll get off, we'll make a radio call. Put that up, turn that off. Ames traffic, Mooney 875 is cleared, runway 31, headed back to the hangars. Ames. Well, I want to thank you guys for being here. Thank you for coming along. We had uh, we had a nice little vacuum pump issue that we just fixed and solved and got taken care of, and we are good to go. So we can go ahead and start flying again. Um, overall, a very uneventful flight, just down to Ankeny, got some fuel and back, but uh, good test flight. Um, I'm getting five uh, on my uh, right in the green for suction, so that's good. Um, everything else is working good. Engines are, engine temperatures are staying cool, and and everything else, even on a warmer day. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the traffic. Red tip 032, 45 entry, left down wind to 318. But I am grateful for uh, the days, nice days, of being able to fly. Being able to fly, being able to have a good time, and uh, we will do it again. Uh, I'm going to start taking up some people uh, here, interesting people, and uh, we'll start, uh, start videotaping them. Tell you what, some of these people that I know, they're pretty funny. Pretty funny dudes. Dudes and dudettes. So, anyway, 
I want to thank you for being here. Thanks, thanks for uh, liking and subscribing to this, and thanks for all the emails and the messages that I get. I love listening. I love, uh, love reading them, and I love, uh, I love, I love communicating with people. I love people in general. And remember that I love you. The Lord loves you, and it doesn't hurt to give at least one hour with the God. So go to church. You'll find plenty of blessings there. I guarantee it. So until we see each other again, you guys stay safe, and we will see you over the friendly skies of Iowa. So take care. Bye.